day one, SEMA 2019 goes down right now. Pay attention to the stories and let's enjoy the day together. Come on. Reception today for you. We didn't go. We had a private reception. Um, okay. And the, and the people, what do they feel about the bill? Hmm? Are you you happy with it? I'm really happy. Yeah. yeah? I mean, you know, you got your stamp on it. Everyone sees the colorway and they know it's you, and that's that says a lot right there. You know. Thank you. I like it, man. I think you did a good job. On both of us. What do you think? You like? It? Yeah, dude, I do. I do. I do. I mean, it's got it's it's got style. You know, people know. Being able to do something so that people know who it is, sure. that says a lot, a lot, you know? Without rolling their eyes is what I'm trying to say. A lot of people roll their eyes. Having like big guys like you and other guys like them, that, that's like pretty, it feels really good. Oh, so, dude, I appreciate you saying that, man. It's dope, man. It's really dope. Good job, man. <laughs> In about yeah, like everybody. oh, it's time. Oh, it's time. It's time. Stop talking. Anybody wants pictures, autographs, anything like that, we'll be here. Here with my boy. Hi. Joe Fell. So Joe Fell. What's up? OS Geek and Booth. Artisan Spirits Body Kit on your FRS. I don't know how I did it in a month or so, but it happened. What do you think about it? I love this kit. Like, you know, there, there's I been, love that you love this kit. You know, there's been so many um, iterations of uh, wide body FRSs and BRZs uh, and I never wanted them until I saw this kit like pop okay up on Instagram. so all of the different ones that exist none of them did anything for you no. and then you see this one and you're like like damn I'm cutting fenders how long have you had this car uh, maybe like five years how many miles are on this car 160,000 it was a daily driver Dude, we've gone to LA together. We've, dude, we've done a lot together, and I've seen you dip it Bakersfield, oh, yeah. LA, Orange Vegas, County, yeah. Vegas, yeah. and now Wide Body Artisan Spirits. Okay, Ryan. Yeah. Hello, What's my up? friend. How's it going? Good, man. Um, so it's crazy. Day one. Yep. 
So, how has the reception been to the car? Well, I was not here all day, but yeah. in the morning up until noon, it's been great. Yes. Tons of people walking by, everybody's checking it out. Um, I think it's a unique build yes. because there's nothing else here like it. Okay, well, hold on now. Okay. Why is it a unique build? And go. It's an 85 Honda Civic. Yes. There's no other 85 Hondas here. Uh, nothing like this at all. Um, it's unique because it is a restoration. It's also a tuner car, yes. right? So there's it's a po there's power adders, there's restoration, and there is everything that we do and like. And and who's we? That, uh, the old school Honda guy that's starting to lose their hair, maybe. Okay. Yourself as well. Uh -huh. You've already lost your hair. Yes, I have. But uh, yeah, like you know, the, the the guys that can. When I was a kid. I drove around with my grandmother in this exact same car. Yes. My first car was the same colorway CRX. Yes. So I mean like literally this car to me was my growing up, it was my high school, it was everything that me as a 37 year old Honda guy, is, this, this is what we stick for. Uh, this car is the Wonder Civic and that is because Honda, when they invented this car, when they designed this car, it changed the game. It changed the entire tuner market. It was the gateway to the EGs. It was the gateway to the DCs. It was the gateway to everything that Honda stands for today. Yeah. So what we did was we had Willy Works. You know Willy, right? I do. He restored the entire car for us. Yes. Meticulously went through. Some of these parts were purchased a long time ago, like replacement trims and yes. stuff like that. Um, and then other things weren't available. So we had Willie literally hand build things or spend countless hours restoring trims and hand making whatever he could. So after that process was done with the restoration and the paint, we we then got it into our hands. Ken racing, Ken's racing engines did the engine for us. And he um, fully built a B16B. So, B16B punched out to two liter. Yep. Okay. We we chose Kinsler ITBs. They're 55 millimeter. We figured that's a pretty much perfect size for a two liter displacement engine. And uh, we just got it on the dyno on it was like about five, four or five days ago, and it made 240 wheel horsepower and 165 torque. 240, 165 on about 1800 pounds. The car? Yeah, of course. Not 1,800 pounds of boost, that no, would be a lot. No, it's 1,800 yeah. pounds curb weight. Of the curb weight, yep. And, um, yeah, it's pretty It's pretty odd. It's a lot higher than, the numbers came in a lot higher than I thought it was going to be. And the car runs great, great drivability. It's on an AEM Infinity, and Bo Brown from formerly AEM. Of AEM, yep. He tuned the car for us. Um, did an amazing job. The car runs fantastic. Um, coupled with our electronics and all of our ignition upgrades and everything that we do at Rywire. Um, we also used our Rywire PDM on the car. So it's, you know, fully wired, solid state. There's, we got away from all the old school relays and fuses. Yeah. And it's just a um, really simple, amazing. All right, so it's a very good balance of restoration and modification. Yep. Let's look inside real quick. All right, let's check this out. So we wanted to keep kind of like the Mugen theme because it's a, you know, it's a resto car and um, pay homage to that a little bit. But we also wanted it to be like a race prepped kind of a car. As you can see our PDM and ECU in there, and a bunch of like small Mugen bits with the seats. Um, we used an AMM XL2 dash. I mean, check out this dashboard right here. Mm -hmm. This is an original. I've seen a lot of these cars throughout the years and you know as time goes you just don't find dashboards and door panels that in that condition clean yeah you know I mean? and then uh in the back it's just like you can see jared saganti's work with the cage yep i yep. mean all that work is so meticulously done we're using the jrz suspension so you know those are pretty penny and work amazing yeah let's look in the back open the back yeah. for us Pay homage with a JDM spirit. We have all the Japanese, really hard to get Japanese exterior parts. And then the inside is just real clean, real simple. 
mounted the JRZ's radium surge tank. So um, one of the things that we were talking about is you have a car that if people were to find one, it would be maybe four to nine thousand for depending on the condition and then jrz is a top end suspension company yeah. which custom coilovers with external reservoirs costs about six to eight thousand dollars yeah right so you have a car that most people think that's what it's worth right and that's what and the suspension the alone, suspension alone right it's probably in the eight thousand dollar ball ballpark so yeah um, so i mean the fresh paint it's a very good balance between yeah. restoration, race, show, functionality. Yep. It's a beautiful car. So what makes you, what are you most proud of that you did on this car? Most proud of, well, electrical is the easy one to say, oh, you know, we did all the electrical. Yes. Stuff, but I am, I think I'm most proud of just actually spending my time to put it together. Yes. Um, well, you have experience because for those that don't know, you have an, sure. a white 87. Yeah. So for me, my, my white Civic, actually like when i put that thing together i know we spoke about this before when i put the bumper on and finished the car i literally like started tearing up you know what i mean like it was on this, your personal one yeah this like feeling of just like oh my god you know like it means something special to me so for me to be able to repeat that kind of a feeling and actually like finish the car because generally when we do electronics well, we don't always like literally finish the car and have to you know put the put the bumper like put the bumper on and finalize the car. Yeah. You know what I mean? And I got to do that with this build. Yeah. I got to actually see it to the end and have it be finished. Yes. Um, so that's probably my favorite part. I mean, it's easy to say electrical, plumbing, yada, 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 but. All right, and so. Find it, finish it, tune it, and then just drive it into this. And you guys fired it up and tuned it when? On sat on, oh, we fired it up probably like several days before tune, but yes. tune was on Saturday. So it's a fully functional driving fully car. Fully functional driving car. We had it transported, I drove it out of the trailer. Yes. Like I said, it makes great power. It drives really well. Yes. It drives simply and easily. Yes. It starts right up. It's an individual throttle body car. Everybody, oh, it's so hard to, you know, like, it's so hard to tune those cars and whatever, but when you're working with the best using the best stuff yeah it'll drive like a normal vehicle so, yeah i mean my per, uh, you know my it yeah, beat experience and when it's done right it it's looks done great right, it's done right yeah um we're using a barometric pressure sensor yep. for our ve tune yeah so there's no map uh bo brown tuned the car and he you know was like we don't we don't need a map sensor we could do it with barrow yeah. and you really don't like it, it just drives so good it, the cold start's amazing like everything see those just... are those are the things that the real car guys are going to be able to appreciate cold yeah. start drivability you know and and, and out of VTEC, it's going to have great gas mileage yeah it's exactly. really good they can that's it that's even take much gas on the dyno yeah that's awesome like, man it was you know after it got running well it was just it wasn't even using much gas well here dude the thing about it is it's speaking for itself the original two-tone the bright red uh, conventional technology, original chassis. It, you know, you did a you did a great job. I know Brandon's happy for it. Yeah. The the reception day one has been amazing, and uh, I'm a hundred percent sure that it's just gonna get crazier tomorrow, man. Yeah. So nicely done, my friend. Thank you, man. You're welcome. All right, you guys. I'm here with Kenji from Gritty. What's up, Kenji? Hi. Hi, okay. guys. How you doing? So you guys, Supra. Supras are the theme for SEMA. But there's a big difference, and I want everyone to really pay attention to this because there is a very substantial difference between this Supra and all of the 28 to 30 that are here. Uh, so, Kenji, let's talk about why. why. Why this one is different. Why is it not just to be a Pandem wide-bodied Supra? From what, what did you guys have to do to make this what it is? Okay, well, this is our Gretti A90 drift concept. Yes. Um, so I think it's the only car that's here, only Supra here, that's pretty much a race spec. Yes. Uh, it's uh, almost a purpose built for drifting. Yes. Um, and uh, the biggest challenge we had, and the biggest cha difference as well, is it's a full motorsport electronics. Yes. Motec uh, M142. Um, and the biggest challenge was since Motec didn't have any firmware yes. uh, for this platform, we decided to keep the, the B58 engine. Yes. Um, and the a lot of the, the components basically to the sensors all can can bus. So Motec, we had to pretty much go on the back end and yes. code everything that so you guys had to reverse engineer, reverse engineer write the coding right so we reverse engineered and figure out the the, the messages to the sensors uh, down to like fuel pressure sensors yes um, 
and even down to the headlights. Right, we, so on this Supra, even the headlight, headlights are can connected. Right. So to get them to work on your keypad, right. you had to reverse engineer it. Right, so many hours just even just trying to get the headlights to come on and, and turn signals and uh, all that good stuff to, to make it complete instead of just a you know, race car without some of those accessories. So we wanted to complete that. Um, but uh, we teamed up with NCS, Nautil, uh, that could, you know, write the program, yes. and code it, and figure out all the, the details to complete the, the car. And uh, we only had basically about two months to build this car. Right. So we were scrambling, uh, but we made it happen. Um, even teamed up with uh, CPC in Australia yes. for the intake manifold. Um, factory comes with a water to air intercooler. Took that out and made it into a front mounting cooler. Yes. And uh, a lot of custom parts. And, um, we had to figure out how the factory cooling system works. Yeah. The factory has four radiators. Yes. And we rip all that out and then we had to kind of figure out how all the water system works. So OEM is four radiators and how many are you using now? Just one single. One race, massive race. unit? Right. All right, so you worked with CPC in Australia to make the manifold. Right. And then what throttle body are you using? This is a BMW, I think it's a, like an E. No, I don't even know which uh, BMW that comes off. But it's a drive-by-wire BMW drive -by -wire. throttle body? Right. Okay, so the difference here is, is engineering, electronics, mm -hmm. and it is a fully functional race car. Now, we talked about this. This isn't the first one. You guys actually did one before this. Uh, I can't really go into detail on that. Okay. But uh, yeah, it, uh, we've been working on these, but we haven't uh, been able to. And who have you been working with? Are you allowed to say? Uh, no, but <laughs> you, you'll see. It's coming. Yeah, it's coming. Okay, so for the public, they're going to see what you guys have right, been working on. Yeah, and a lot of our drift uh, technical partner from Ken Gushi's program yes. is on board on this as well as UC Borg Warner and Motul. Yes. Uh, Weissfab. Yeah. So a lot of the, the uh, uh, partners that we've been working with yes. for our 86 drift program has been helping us with this as well. So it's, uh, and my guy's been working. Because that's the most nights. important thing is to is to distinguish this from all of the other Supras, wide body or not. Right. This is a full all-on race car yeah. that you guys had to reverse engineer and code with Motec to make it possible. Yeah. So I think it's the first uh, race prep A90 Well, you know what, man? I think that that's the most important part. There's so many Supras here. You're already hearing people say, oh, great, another Supra. Right. But there is a very, very big difference right. between this and all the other ones. How many hours in electronics work and wiring did you guys Ooh. end up putting in? I, I, can't, I, I can't even count. Yeah. Many hours. And then how many people on the team to get everything done? Uh, it was Takeshi, Ben, and Sean mainly. But then Naoto from uh, NCS. Yeah. Um, bunch of late nights. Yes. Uh, all nighters. There was one weekend where we showed up at uh, Saturday morning. Yes. Then go home till Tuesday night. So Woo! that's the kind of hours that we did. Yeah. In. Well, you know what? It was I, fun. I appreciate you sharing some of these yeah. intimate details. Yeah. Uh, the photos and the, and the close-ups of, of the modifications speak for themselves. Yeah. But that that's what matters is, is that yeah. this is different yeah. in a very substantial way than the other ones. So it's, it's been pretty fun building it and had the great opportunity to build it up to this kind of, you know. And level. you have more coming out, right? Yeah. How many more do you have dropping? Uh, you'll see. Okay. <laughs> okay, thank you for your time, yeah. Kenji. Appreciate you, you, man. Thank you.